Tape Projection. It's Friday morning, and you know what that means. It's time for another episode of the Alabama Slam Podcast. I'm your host, Corey Hanna. What's going on, guys? It's Patrick Akers. And uh, we're gonna we're gonna flip it up a little bit this week since we just had the pay per view in AEW. We're gonna start off with that, and uh, the hot topic for the week is obviously uh, MJF and Brian Danielson, and uh, maybe some of the aftermath of what happened. Not as not as uh, newsworthy or making the rounds as much as the all out brawl out last year, but uh, MJF's got a little bit of heat on him. Uh, and there's some people I've seen that think it, it was all a work. So we'll, we'll get into all that. What, Patrick, go ahead and just give me your thoughts on, on let's go with the match first. Uh, so I, te- you asked me after Sunday, and I actually fell asleep <laughs> right before this match kicked off. Cause I'm, just, I'm an old man and I mean, shit, these things are long. Uh, so I've actually had, I have since watched MJF and Danielson twice. And I have to say, and a lot of people are saying this, so it's nothing new. This is the best Iron Man match of all time. And this is one of AEW's best matches ever. You know, we complained about the build to this pay-per-view. We complained about the build specifically to this story between Danielson and MJF. But damn, like, when AEW does these fucking pay-per-views, they they go all in. Like, it, it they don't, they don't, they rarely miss ever right. in terms of the wrestling action. Um and the thing I loved about this Iron Man match too is it like it actually told a story in the match itself, right? You know, we we get all these uh, the wrestling narratives unfold a lot with the promos and and everything that happens, um, you know, before and after the bell. But really, for the most part, in a lot of wrestling matches, there's not a lot of huge story beats that take place, right? This Iron Man match, start to finish was just absolutely perfect because the whole story leading up into this match was, hey, MJF may be the devil, but he's not the greatest wrestler ever. There's no way he's going to be able to hang with Danielson. And you saw it as soon as the match started, right? MJF kind of powders out of the ring. He walks around it a little bit. They go to lock up. What's the first move that MJF hits? He hits Danielson with an arm drag, right? An elementary school, you know, first couple weeks in wrestling school move. And so, you know, MJF poses, he posters a little bit, and Danielson just kind of smirks. And then for the next 10 minutes, Danielson just hands MJF his ass with a technical wrestling just showcase. And that's where MJF goes to the outside. He starts to unravel. He throws the fucking drink on the kid, which I'm sure we'll (laughs) we'll circle back around to. Um, And then MJF starts going to the shoulder, right? Because Danielson got that hurt shoulder from the 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 weeks that he made Danielson run this gauntlet of all these superstar competitors, and then about twenty minutes in, Danielson starts coming back. MJF starts going, "Oh shit, I can't put this dude away. What the hell's going on?" MJF starts to get out of his comfort zone. Right, he does the springboard moonsault to the outside, something he never does. And commentary's kind of bringing it up like, "Oh, Danielson, uh, MJF's trying to go out of his." element here he's he's trying to go to these waters that he's never been before to try to beat danielson he hits that fucking moonsault what happens bums his knee starts grabbing his knee and then they just go on from there they just they, it was orchestrated so beautifully and then you know in between there mjf's grabbing the water right he's because he's being drug into deep waters nobody's ever done this to him before even at the very end uh bringing the oxygen tank out yeah, Danielson didn't need an oxygen tank. Danielson's up, fired up. MJF's there on the floor, but you know he sees it now that it's gone to overtime. He he can't beat this dude the way he wanted to. So then, of course, he resorts to, he uh, resorts to dirty tactics, which he even done in the match. Right, he low blows Danielson, which I think if I had one critique of this match, it was that in that spot where he he kicked Danielson in the nuts and Rimsburg. DQ'd him, which gave Danielson one fall, and then MJF pinned him twice consecutively to get to make it two to two. The audience really didn't know what was happening because there was no kind of there was no moment to to let it breathe. It just went boom, boom, boom. I I don't want to interrupt for too long, but I missed all of that section because I've bitched about this on every pay per view, but for whatever reason, Fire Stick. 
Bleacher Report do not work well together. I even tried, I had a Roku in there last time. I never have problems with any other streaming services. But um, I, f- I hit the fast forward button because I knew I was a couple minutes behind and I just wanted to make sure I was staying current um, so I didn't miss the end of the pay-per-view because that happened to me last time. I missed the last like five minutes because I was so behind with buffering issues. So I had hit fast forward. And all of a sudden it's two, two. And I was like, what the fuck happened? And I didn't want to rewind and what, you know, whatever. So, and I didn't go back and, and watch. So now I know what happened. (laughs) Yeah. And even the audience was like kind of quiet because they didn't know, like, and again, it's just, you know, it's picking nits there, but if like MJF would have used the dynamite ring, uh, and then, you know, Rimsburg gives Danielson a fall, then they have to wait until Danielson makes it back up to his feet. And of course, you know, the American dragon being the baby face, right? He's not going to go out like that. So he staggers back up to his feet. Boom. MJF hits him with some kind of move, hits him with that heat seeker pal driver, pins him. And then Danielson gets back up. He hits him with another heat seeker pal driver, pins him again. Then the third time when he hits it, Danielson kicks out. And then now you got two, two and the audience knows what happened. Right. Instead of it Mm -hmm. being so fast like that. Um, But yeah, I mean, this was, this was just an excellent match through and through. Um, and I thought, boy, they they had me at the end. I really thought Danielson when he started doing the yes chance. I was like, oh fuck, are they gonna, <laughs> are they gonna like they they hooked me? I was like, maybe maybe he'll do it. Yeah. And then of course, I, and I love too that Danielson actually tapped out and didn't pass out. Yeah. Um, because one, it puts even a, a bigger feather in MJF's cap. Um, and then also it gives Danielson kind of a crisis of confidence here, right? You saw that on Dynamite, which, again, if we want to be nitpicky here on Dynamite, I really wish they would have advertised that, like, tonight on Dynamite you're going to hear some pretty shocking post-match comments from Brian Danielson because essentially right now his story is he looks like he may be contemplating retirement because yeah. uh, he was like, maybe I need to go home. Like, I wish they would have built that up more that, like, you know, is, was Revolution the last time we ever saw Brian Danielson in a ring? Now, of course, that's not going to be the case, right? Uh, right. But but play it up for for the story some. But yeah, I thought this this Iron Man match, you know, for as much flack as we gave the build of it for, and I think you, rightly so. I think the build to this was lackluster. The build to the whole pay per view, I thought, was a little bit lackluster. But I mean, goddamn, if they don't fucking deliver every single time when you buy, when you pay 50 bucks for a pay-per-view, they're going to make sure you get your money's worth. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no qualms about that. Like they, they definitely always deliver when it comes to. Although why was MJF not on the show Wednesday to gloat? Why did he not cut that, that promo just in the ring? Yeah. That's a good question. Again, like following up with this kind of stuff. Like he should have been, he literally should have been the first thing on Dynamite. Dynamite opens, they do the pyro and his music kits. He comes down to the ring and he he can do the same exact promo that he did backstage. Now, obviously it might have, it might not have as much gusto because he's not, you know, covered in blood and everything like that. But just having him on the show, I mean, he's the champion. Uh, But again, you know, that those are the, um, it's those kind of moments that AEW struggles with all the time, right? It's never been the in-ring action. Yeah. Um, let's talk about the, the, the throwing the drink on the kid and what you, what are you thinking there? Like, you know, at first I was like, well, he just like tossed a water on somebody, no big deal. And then somebody said, you know, it came out, it was supposedly tequila. And then there's people saying that it was a plant in the crowd and, so on and so forth. What what do you think about all of it? I mean, I don't know. It, MJF is the master of this fucking k- kayfabe. Who knows? Walk in the line. Is it real? Is it not? Is it the part of the show? Is it not? So listen, if it was a plant and seemingly nobody else knew about it, then that's great stuff. You know, you could imagine maybe Max just sent somebody out there and was like, hey, you know, go talk. Don't tell anybody. But go talk to, you know, those people over there. And then he could have just done it for real, right? (laughs) It could have all been. And then if that's the case, I think you really have to have a a sit-down conversation with him and be like, look, you know, you're doing great work, but but there's got got to be a line here somewhere. 
Like you can't, I don't know, you know, throwing somebody's hat and that kind of stuff, you know, throwing people's popcorn. I get all that kind of stuff. Throwing a drink into somebody's face. Maybe, maybe that's the line. (laughs) And also like, Hey, what if that was the damn, what if dude's dad was there? And yeah. we're 10 minutes into this main event and MJF chunks a drink in a kid's face and old daddy just cold cocks MJF and knock, what if he knocks his ass out? <laughs> and fucking here we are in a damn pay-per-view, dog. What are we going to do? Yeah. You know, it's satellite time. We only got a certain amount of window. We advertise. So it's just you you can put yourself in bad situations like that. So, you know, I, I don't think it was anything too major, but I think it's also a teachable moment to just be like, hey, maybe – Love what you're doing, getting good heat, but let, let's try to be a little bit smarter about it going forward. Did you see any of the press conference? I did see the press conference. I thought the press conference was amazing. I, every AEW's press conference, and I think we've said this before, they should just use it as an extension of the show. It's it's another storytelling avenue that you can play with. So I would tell all the people, everybody's in character. We treat this like it's, you know, seven to nine o'clock on a Wednesday night on a dynamite show. Like that's how we do these press conferences. So I yeah, I thought I thought it was perfect. I love him getting in Brian Alvarez's face. I love him getting in Dave Meltzer's face. I love the fact that he was trolling CM Punk with those fucking pickles. Uh, <laughs> I didn't just, see the whole thing. I just saw like the basically when he entered the room. Uh I saw that on TikTok. I, yeah. So, yeah, it sounds like he, it was a good it was good fun. I, I, I've said it before. Like he's he's just if you wanted to know what Ric Flair would have been like, in a, with a modern day media environment, this this is it. This is Max. It, it's moments like Sunday night that I feel good about saying like, hey, this dude could potentially be one of the best to ever do it, because uh, he just delivers in these types of moments. And the big question mark for a lot of people was his wrestling ability, and I think he rightfully shut a lot of people up like that. Uh, you know, you even look at somebody like, you know, on the other company, Roman Reigns, um, has Roman Reigns ever had a match that was this good? I I don't think so. Now Roman's character, I think is, it rivals MJF and Roman certainly has a charisma about him and a presence, uh, that's a little bit different than MJF, but he, he's never had a match this good. And a lot of it too has to do with his the dance partner being Brian Danison, right? Who we've rightfully and a lot of people have rightfully called the you know the greatest re- in ring wrestler of all time. Yeah, imagine thinking Brian Danielson ain't the goat, <laughs> bro. You could take it if you just took a a DVD box set if they still did those, and it was literally just of Brian Danielson's matches in AEW. That might be the greatest fucking in ring wrestling box set of all time. Yeah, I mean he's he's put on nothing but bangers since he he went to AEW. Omega, Hangman, Bandito, MJF, uh, Roosh. Roosh, like you fucking just go down Moxley, go down the line. Like it, it is, it's it's a joy to watch. We're lucky to get to watch him, and I and I think he's probably not going anywhere. I think he might just go down to Ring of Honor for a little bit. Um, that's my guess anyway. Um. Uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll see what's next for the American Dragon. We'll also see what's next for MJF. I mean, who who's he going to feud with next? Is it going to be Hangman? Yeah, that's what um, I was about to ask. Was where where does MJF go from from here? Um, you know, we earlier uh, late last year or whenever he took the title, you know, we speculated about a couple things. You know, Ricky Starks happened, Danielson happened. We said maybe Kingston, but now it looks like Kingston's going to be Ring of Honor for a while. So. Um, I mean, I don't know. What, what? Who do you think is the next? Do you think? Do you think Hangman is the next logical step? Or I thought that before I watched the show Wednesday night, and then saw, for some strange reason, John Moxley was having a match after he had just went through a death match and had been hanged. Somehow he is able to compete three days later. But that's a that's a whole yeah. other discussion. Uh, but then it looks like they're going to continue that, right? Because Evil Uno came out and you know, Moxley beating up the Dark Order. Out comes Hangman. So maybe that's not the end of that feud. Uh, MJF and Adam Cole have had words on Twitter. So, you know, we should see Adam Cole back in action here. 
uh, the next couple of weeks. Is is that somebody? Um, I don't know. You got a little bit of time here before double or nothing, but again, like I would like to see this momentum be kept up. I would like to see some more stories be told. If they took the stories in AEW as seriously as they took the wrestling, this would be the greatest pro wrestling show that's ever been. Yeah. Top to bottom, but uh, you know they they excel in one area, and then uh, you know personally, I, I think they're even they're they're less than mediocre in the storytelling aspect of their programming. So we we touched on uh, Moxley and Hangman for just a second. Um, I personally was ready for this storyline to be over. Um, and I thought they ended it with the match the other night. Um, and then even Hangman talking to Renee last night, but then he comes out to try to save the Dark Order who were getting their asses whipped after they got got beat in the ring. Um, I just don't know we need to keep keep going down that road. But we, we don't need to dig too deep into that. What would you think of this match? I thought I – thought, it and the 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 main t- the main title the main event like we're both pretty untouchable in terms of performance yeah i mean this texas death match uh <clears throat> much like darby allen has the coffin match in AEW is like his special kind of match he gets up for uh believe hangman page is now undefeated in AEW and texas death matches right he had that classic right, with, yeah. classic with lance archer where they took down the ropes and he did the buckshot off the, the referee's back that we love so much. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, yeah, these two just beat the fuck out of each other <laughs> Sunday night. <laughs> yeah. uh, it was everything we expected it to be. Moxley brought out a fork. Uh, t- t- Hangman draped the barbed wire over himself to hit him with a moonsault. Um, it was stiff. It was action-packed. Uh it made some people in the crowd like they got some really good reaction shots of people just uh, recoiling and in, in anguish as these two were just beating the shit out of each other in the ring. Uh, that chair spot that could have almost been a damn disaster yeah. that they managed to pull off. Um, and then, I, I, yeah, I love the fact that that Hangman, Hangman got the win because I thought he needed it. Um, obviously, it looks like they're going to go with – Moxley and the Blackpool Combat Club being heels, which is something that they've teased for a little bit, but now it looks like they're going to go full bore in that direction. Probably the right call because you don't have a lot of heels outside MJF um, at the top of the card in AEW. You got a lot of baby faces, particularly now that you know Adam Cole when he left was a um, a heel, not going to be a heel coming back, obviously no. uh, from the from his injury. So you need a guy like Moxley and Claudio and Yuta, and they can play that role. Um, yeah, they've kind of leaned into it. They they haven't done the full bore like turn turn, but like you know coming out and beating the shit out of Dark Order after the match was pretty heel move. <laughs> yeah, it's a heel move, uh, and I love the finish of the Texas Death Match too. I love the chain over the neck. Again, yeah. love the fact that Moxley tapped out instead of passing out because because AEW's kind of overdone the passing out from a submission stuff. Now it's time to let guys start tapping out for real. Uh, and we finally got to see Hangman hang somebody. Yeah. We, had, we hadn't seen that AW yet. so I hadn't really thought of, of it that way until you pointed that out via yeah. text. And I, I love Hangman's special entrance, too. Yeah. I, I thought that was nice. MJF's special entr- entrance with the orchestra really didn't do it for me because it, it was weird a little bit, like the way they transitioned it as normal music. Yeah. Uh, but Hangman coming out with the with the all-black – to that special music, uh, I thought that was a nice touch. Um, and I, yeah, I, you know, if I'm booking, if I'm booking, I never would have had Moxley come out Wednesday night. They, he would have had to take a couple weeks off uh, before he just was yeah. able to wrestle a match, particularly because like Hangman came out limping when he was making the save. Yeah. But John Moxley was somehow able to just wrestle again, consistency and logic. With just, no bandages or any kind no, of shit. Not even have his ribs taped up. Didn't have a shoulder taped up. Nothing. He's just out. So he's still doing it. Um, so yeah, I, I would have Hangman challenge MJF for the title next. Um, but looks like they might not be done with Hangman Moxley. But I, I don't. Where do you go from here? Unless it's a faction versus faction thing. Yeah. But, I mean that that may be what they're planning. Yeah. 
Uh, so let's let's take it back a little bit. What do you think about Jericho and Starks? It was fine. It was a good opener. Uh, way more Jericho fans than I anticipated. Did you catch that? Yeah. It's a lot of Jericho chants. I don't know. Um, I just felt like it was a little flat for me, you know, and we obviously we're huge Ricky Starks guys, but like, I, I don't know, man. It just didn't have the energy I felt like it needed to be the first first match of the night. Yeah, I mean, in retrospect, I, I probably would have had the trios match here. Uh, just because of how bonkers that fucking match was and how yeah. incredible it was. Uh, but Starks isn't big enough of a star. So you, you the crowd pops just for him uh, in general. So I think him being the curtain jerker in this pay-per-view was okay. Uh, I think it kind of fell flat for you just because, like, this is not – again, we, like we talked about last week, it's the Jericho special. <laughs> this, this, this feud just ran out of steam. Yeah, uh, because we went we went backwards with it from uh, where we where pro wrestling usually does. But uh, I'm glad Starks got the win. It looks like moving forward to Wednesday night, he put the Jericho stuff behind him, uh, and then of course Wednesday he comes out to cut the promo. I know Jay White's not in Bullet Club, but when that music hit, I legitimately thought Jay White was coming down the ramp. Yeah, that's what I thought was happening too. And I think the people in the audience did too because they got hyped. And then when uh, Juice Robinson was in the ring, they were just like, oh, oh, okay. It was not not who we thought it was. I just thought that that was probably how they were teasing the the next Forbidden Door. But then Juice came out, and I was like, well, he's AEW. Yeah, he's not. I don't think he's with New Japan anymore. No. Uh, and I like Juice Robinson a lot. Again, I think it's another guy that needs to be on television more. So, uh, Juice is a guy that can kind of match Ricky's charisma on the mic. So, this yeah. should be an entertaining feud. And I want to see more of Juice Robinson. Uh, but yeah, like you said, I think it's teasing some kind of forbidden door because Ricky, Ricky made the explicit comment of it. Where does he go next? And of course, we got Forbidden Door coming up, and I think June. Uh, or yeah. sometime this summer. So you, you got to start building that. Uh, and I don't think Ricky Starks was on Forbidden Door card last year. If I'm, I don't think I don't he think, was either. I don't think he was on there. So uh, a lot of good matchups for him, him to have with a, with a counterpart from New Japan. And it gives Ricky something to do too while, you know, obviously you want to protect him as a main event star, but you can't have him go up against MJF again, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah, the promos between Starks and, and Robinson should be fun. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how – you know, I guess they'll or they'll have a match next week, right? So – Oh, did they announce it already? I think so. Um, I could be wrong. could be ahead of myself, but that should be fun. Um, <clears throat> TNT Championship, Samoa Joe versus Wardlow. Give me your thoughts. I mean, this was the worst match of the night, right? Yeah. <laughs> I don't even think it was close. Um, again, it was kind of positioned a little bit weird on the card because it came – where did it come? It come right after the Texas death match, right? And before – I, I thought it was before. I feel like the death match went right before, but you, you may be right. No, I'm looking, yeah, I'm looking at it here. So it went right after the death match because it went death match, TNT championship, oh. tag, tag match, and then the main event. So, Shit, I got, I'm all fucked up. So, yeah, it came right off of the, the heels of that death match. Um, I mean, look, Wardlow has the move set. It's cool that he's a big guy and can do these like Jeff Hardy moves. Again, like I've talked about with his character before, I just, I just don't, I don't believe him when he, when he wrestles, when he talks, none of that stuff. Uh, and I think it's the right move to probably have him beat Samoa Joe because I think now that you, Will Powerhouse Hobbs is back in the fold, you, Samoa Joe and Hobbs can't really coexist because they take up sort of the same narrative space. Right, they're both big hoss, badass heel dudes, and so it's probably better served to let Wardlow beat Samoa Joe, and then I would going forward, Samoa Joe would just exclusively be on Ring of Honor now that it has some kind of television. Um, and then yeah, Wednesday night Hobbs beat 
beat Wardlow for the TNT title. Um, and yeah, I mean, I just, think we uh, all saw that coming because of the, the face of the revolution stuff. But. Yeah, I wish the match would have been better. Well, I wish the ending would have been better. Uh, that fucking crash pad just <laughs> looked absolutely awful. So, so I've seen a lot of shit about that. Like, what, what, what were they thinking? I think coming off Willow trying to do the Dudley Boys power bomb to Anna mm. Jay, and she missed the table completely. They just want to protect, uh, protect their wrestlers, which is admirable. Um, you got to have it look good, though. It can't. He barely sunk into anything. Yeah. Like. I don't know. Can can he take a spine buster on the ramp? That might have been more of a convincing finish, right? Yeah. If QT comes out, hits Wardlow with the chair. Wardlow, you know, does the shit to him. Turns around, Hobbs hits him with spine buster right there on the ramp. Commentary puts it over. One, two, three. Or at least shoot shoot the crash pad at an angle where you can't see that it's clearly the fucking crash pad. But it was as high as the damn. Stage, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> it barely the crash pad itself was the size of the stage, as high yeah, as the stage. Ridiculous, it just wasn't. Yeah, I don't know what they were thinking there, and it it, it made the whole segment. And I don't know, it, it might have came across different in in the arena, but it, it just it looked bad on television, yeah. Uh, and I'm not even mad at QT like joining forces with Powerhouse Hobbs, I think that could be interesting. Um. QT, I think, is a talented guy and can can do some things in a managerial role, um, particularly now that he's away from the factory and you give him a guy like Hobbs who has all the potential in the world. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, let's see if maybe they don't – we said this last time when Samoa Joe got it and they've hot-shotted it again, but maybe it's time that we calm down with the TNT title change and, and let Powerhouse have it let him beat some folks, and then the guy that I would build up at the end of the year to take it off of Hobbs would be Jungle Boy. Ooh, yeah. And that's who I would. That's who I would get up at. You know, around when is all out? September ish. Sounds right. Six months here. We we build up Jungle Boy to to be the one to de- dethrone Hobbs and give Jungle Boy his first single titles win in AEW. Yeah, that could be interesting. They've made it clear, or his character has made it clear, that he's chasing a strap this year. Yeah, and you know he is now <laughs> jumping to the to Jungle Boy versus Christian Cage. He's now vanquished all his enemies in AEW, right? Uh, he has taken out Luchasaurus, and now he has finally got retribution on Christian Cage. And what I thought was a, I thought was a pretty good match. I mean, it was yeah. super short, but it did its job, right? Yeah, for sure. Cage. Uh, that's a choice with the the turtleneck tank top. <laughs> I mean, just he's so he he's so damn good, man. Just I love Christian Cage so much. Um, little it was a little comical the way that Jungle Boy just shut the casket and then it it just fell. Uh, I thought it was pretty badass. I mean, I don't know. It kind of took me out of it a little bit. I was like, oh okay. And I think it probably goes reminded me of those like rest. What was it? Here comes the paint. One of those wrestling games where that was the thing. You shut the casket and then it just dropped down. Um. But yeah, I I thought it was a good match too. Yeah, I enjoyed it. Uh, you know, it might have been a little too on the nose to have him sit there outside the casket and contemplate. And I think that part went a little too long. Yeah, uh, I, I did like that he acknowledged that though. That and. And commentary kind of built it up that Christian was a father figure to him. And so this is, you know, as much as he hates Christian, right, there's a part of him, I'm sure, that still loves him. Right. Uh, so I like that. But, yeah, I think you're probably right. It probably went just a little, too on, a little too on the nose because I think it went a little too long. I did enjoy it. I'm not saying I didn't dislike it. I think it was maybe a little too on the nose. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, uh, so let's go. Let's go into the tag match. Um, we'll give each of these a few minutes, and then we'll shift gears a little bit. What? What are you thinking there? You talking about the 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 regular four-way. tag team the four way? Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's what we talked about, right? We we just didn't know FTR would be back this quickly. We said April, yeah. and like we said, you keep it on the guns because FTR is going to come back, and they they showed back up. Yeah, I thought it was uh, a little quick. 
I thought sometime in April we'd see him back. Um, and the speculation and the all what you would say the 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 if you were to believe the dirt sheets was that they came back because they've got an extension, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but then Dax made it seem on his podcast that that's not necessarily the case. Mm-hmm. But they cut a pretty emotional promo last night on Dynamite. So we can cover sort of all these things. Yeah. Now. I um, mean, Tony's got to be the biggest idiot in the world if he brought FTR back and didn't sign them to an extension. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, you just you don't do it, right? <laughs> right? You have somebody like you keep going somewhere somewhere else. Uh, FTR still over his, over his shit. Fans still love him. Hell, yeah. of, hell of a promo Wednesday night. That's what you have those guys for. Um, and Austin and Colton have a lot of potential, and now they get to be in a feud with arguably the best tag team going today. Uh, and so we get to see what the guns have potential-wise. I would still have FTR take those titles off of them uh, because the money match is the, the trilogy match with the Young Bucks. I mean, that that's where it's at, mm-hmm. FTR and the Young Bucks. And like we talked about before, like especially if CM Punk's going to come back, you fucking run CM Punk and FTR versus the Elite. Mm-hmm. So we'll we'll see what happens there. I just want to give more praise and love to Jeff Jarrett. <laughs> Jeff Jarrett, at fucking 50-something years old, he is as entertaining as he's ever been. And I love watching him. I love the Fargo strut. I love the fact that they figured out how to use Satnam now to where he just comes in and does these just ridiculous looking spots because he's so damn big. And I think I'm gonna say maybe I'll say something a little bit crazy here. I think there is potential, and I think you can do it with the group of Sanjay and Jarrett and Lethal and Satinum all turning babyface at some point. I think it is doable. <laughs> I think just because it's such a quirky looking group with all those fucking guys. I think it could be a little bit of comedy involved, uh, and you you could get those those four guys over as baby faces. Uh, they probably won't do that because they have a lot of utility as being the heels. But um, yeah, I thought the match was short, but I thought uh, again, much like we talked about leading into the pay per view, the one team that was a little bit forgetful in all of this was the Guns. Uh, yeah, but obviously they are they're going to be the ones to feud with FTR, so. That'll that'll change going forward. Yeah, uh, as you mentioned, the Satinum with uh, Dan Housen in the ring together was funny. It's great stuff. Uh, uh, yeah, so let's let's go to the uh, women's world championship three way: Jamie Hayter versus Soraya versus Ruby Soho. Um, I think you called this one right with um, Ruby turning. Yeah. Although I thought Soraya would would win the title. Yeah. Um, And I'm still not sure if that's – I know Jamie Hayter is over, but if you're trying to get – if you're trying to get a heel group over, a heel faction over, they have to take things from the baby faces, right? They can't just spray ales on their chest when they beat them, right? (laughs) They have to like run roughshod and start ripping shit away from babyface. And the one thing you can take from the homegrown group is you can take away that women's title. Um, so I, I don't know. I'm not sure if I still wouldn't have had Soraya win this. Obviously, they kept it on Jamie Hayter, who is just a, I mean, talk about being a star. I mean, the crowd is is so in love with her for all the right reasons, right? I mean, she's. I think Jamie Hayter is the best in-ring women's wrestler in the world right now. Um, you know, she doesn't have the kind of total package in the way that like a Becky Lynch or a Bianca Belair has, but she's not far from that level, I don't yeah. think. Uh, but yeah, we we predicted a, a Ruby Soho heel turn and we, we got it after, after the bell. Uh, and so we'll see what happens now. Obviously, Wednesday night, Ruby Soho cut one hell of a promo. Yeah. Uh, that's a... The heel promo of, you know, you fans are at fault here is very cliche territory, but she fucking knocked it out of the park, and all of it made sense Wednesday to the to the 
as much where you go like she's talking you go oh, she's she's got a point like yeah nobody really gave a shit about her yeah uh, it all made it all made sense last night yeah and then of course you get willow involved right because that's another woman that you can kind of bring into this fold uh to try to work with ruby and try to get get her more cachet going forward in that women's division i'm interested to see if they don't pull jade cargill into this feud somehow well i wanted to touch on that too like she was on there last night. She had been off for a little bit and, you know, she said she said she would have a match with somebody next week in Canada. Yeah. Who, who is that going to be? Uh, I'm not sure. I don't think it's anybody on the roster right now. Okay. So they'll bring in somebody. I'm sure. I, I'm, there's probably a big time independent women's wrestler who's from Canada that they'll bring in and, uh, you know, Jade will get her 54th win. I think yeah. over that woman, the part of at Jay at some point her story has to not exist in its own little universe. She's kind of got the Cody Rhodes treatment since he's left for WWE. You know, Cody's all of his feuds felt so sectioned off from everything else that was happening on the program, mm-hmm. and Jade has now taken up that mantle where there's basically a civil war happening in the women's division, and she's not focused on it at all, which I think is a mistake. Um, I would I would honestly have Jade Cargill go w- with the way of Soraya and Ruby and Tony, and have her add to that faction because it seems as if what they're gearing up to do is a women's blood and guts match, which I think is five on five, mm. if I'm not mistaken. So you gotta you gotta add some more people here to both sides, uh, and Jade Jade makes the most sense to go with yeah. the heels uh, and it gives her something, something to do. So, uh, cause I think you already have your five, five baby faces. You got Jamie, Britt, Sheeta, Willow. Maybe it's just four on four. I mean, if you need to five. I, I, last year was five. It's okay. So maybe you put sky blue in there with the baby faces or something. Yeah. That, or if it's, if you're not, if depends on when you do it and when Statlander could be back or Statlander there you go they could, there's your fifth woman right there in place of Scott Blue so yeah i mean that and i would like that i'd like to see a women's blood and guts match for as much shit as like people on the internet have been like oh fucking we don't like watching women bleed and shit i love that AEW's like all right well we're going to put them in a match that's literally called blood and guts <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to tear down the house uh so yeah this is uh I thought it was, the match overall. I thought the match was was good. I mean, these triple threat matches are always difficult. Uh, the best triple threat ever is probably Danielson, uh, Christopher Daniels, and Loki from the first Ring of Honor event. Um, and that was, you know, there's been a myriad of triple threat matches since then, and I don't think any of them has come close to that one. They're, they're just tough to pull off to make sure everybody gets their shine in in a way that makes sense. Yeah. Where you don't have like one woman just outside the ring for no damn reason while two people are wrestling <laughs> in there, you know. So, um, yeah, they're a good match though. So, so quickly, a little bit from last night on Dynamite. Start the show. Yet another Orange Cassidy versus Jay Lethal match. Why do they keep going to that well? <sighs> I don't know. I There's mean, there's like other other people that Cassidy could be fighting. Yeah, he they tried to explain it. <laughs> Whatever. I mean, I guess you just want you want Cassidy on the show because you need him to get jumped because you want to do the tie-in with the Shazam movie because now the All Atlantic title is the international title. Which what's really the difference between an international title and a world title? Isn't that kind of the same thing? Yeah. Whatever. Yeah, I don't know. It's fine. I don't, I mean. It's a changing of a name that nobody was asking for, right? <laughs> yeah. When they're like, here's a Tony Khan with a special announcement. I was like, well, A, first of all, they usually announce when he's going to be on the show. And I was like, what What could this be? Yeah. And then I was like, oh, okay. So, like, did this need to be a thing? Again, my man does not need to be on TV. He's, he's just <laughs> not. He's not ready. He drags down the show. How many times did he say level up? Oh, he yeah, he got the, it was it's, it was almost as if like it was a mandate from Warner Brothers. It was like you have to say level up 
17 times in the span of 45 seconds. Yeah. And he's like, all right, well, fuck it. I'm just going to wait to the last 40 <laughs> or the last five seconds. I'm just going to repeat, level up, level up, level up. He just kept repeating. He, like That wasn't the only thing he said repeatedly. He, kept, he said several other things repeatedly, but I was like, come on, dog. And I get it. Like It's tough talking in front of a camera like that in front of millions of people, but like, don't put yourself in that situation to do it. You're the one writing the show, my man. Give it to fucking Excalibur. <laughs> Let him do his job. Yeah, anybody. Be like, hey, special announcement via Tony Khan. Just yeah. came across my desk. Yeah, they did it Sunday night with Shivani going down there to deliver that Tony didn't want it to end in a draw. Yeah. Just fucking do that. Do anything yeah. else. That was good shit. Yeah. That's the way to do it. I'm interested in Orange Cassidy versus Jarrett, though, next week. Should be good. I like that yeah. Jarrett hit him with a guitar over Cassidy's knee. That was a change of pace, too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was, that was, that was fun. Um, Okay, I think we can wrap that up and move move into WWE. Like I said, we're going. And we missed backwards. the trios match. Oh fuck, we did. We went completely over, and that shit was hot. Yeah, that was a banger. We'll be quick about this because there's not much to say other than I would literally have House of Black beat the living shit out of everybody from now probably till all three of those guys retire because they yeah. they are the shit together. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I okay, I've I loved it. Yeah, cuz that uh how, how did I miss that? It's right there on the fucking list. Uh the the main event, the death match and this one were like my three tops for the night. Um you know, we figured this one was coming and nobody's mad at it. Um and even Jericho last night I thought was funny as hell. He had, he was like, "So, House of Black with your <laughs> the best entrance in modern wrestling come on out here <laughs> i thought that was pretty pretty funny um i mean yeah it, and then they they came out last night and it was pretty badass too so uh them versus uh what, or what are they doing it's basically like a three-way right them with versus the bucks yeah. or versus the elite versus jericho at appreciation society yeah it's a three-way and i would have, um, i'd have house of black beat the shit out of both teams yeah, Personal. just everybody. Like, yeah, give them all hell. I would not have. I would have House of Black keep the trios title for. I, I'm not kidding. A very long time. Like, yeah. I would even have some of those guys win singles titles and still have the trios title together. Like, I would not be mad if Malachi Black won the TNT title while he was still trios champion. Uh, I would have that faction be be one of the more dominant acts that I book on that show because they are, the crowd loves them. They look badass. Like they, when they were standing across from the elite, you were like, Oh, okay. I could see how Kenny Omega could like put up a fight against house of black. (laughs) It it looks like buddy Matthews and Brody King should have just smashed both Nick and Matt Jackson in like 25 seconds. Yeah. (laughs) And I love the fucking Meltzer driver into the buddy Matthews knee. Uh, and last night, Brody walking down the fucking ramp with that belt around his uh, neck. Yeah. <laughs> I love that shit. I mean, just. <laughs> just badass. I mean, could you could you see a scenario where House of Black, I don't know, we're getting fantasy booking in the weeds here, but like could Malachi be the world champion, Brody King be, you know, TNT or all, all international, whatever the fuck it is, and, you know, uh, Buddy Matthews have the other one and just have those three guys come out wearing those three singles belts, and then Julia Hart is just holding the trios title, and House of Black just has all the gold for a couple months. Fuck it. Why not, man? I mean... Okay, who, okay, who else... Who else is a good trios? To, I mean, I mean, you know, Jericho Appreciation Society could cheat and win, um, which would be the only way they'd get it. Uh, AR Fox and Top Flight are fucking awesome, but they're not beating the House of Black. Uh, there's not a lot of other, you know, for a while it seemed like they were trying to build up a bunch of trios teams and they just have kind of done away with it. I mean, t- t- you know, granted they got the JAS who they're just, it seems like they're just picking three random people, um, whoever they want to be in the trios thing. Right. It's, or, or, or it seems that way. I could be wrong about it. Yeah. I think the way you have house of black lose these titles is that they have to be destroyed from within. Yeah. Much like the bloodline, like you have to have a Brody King or a Buddy Matthews and Malachi Black split 
to where it's an internal strife that causes them to lose to some kind of upstart trios team. And the yeah. reason House of Black doesn't go back for the trios titles is because now that they've disbanded or they've had a member go, and then you can spin off to like Malachi versus Brody or Malachi versus Buddy or, or however you do it that way. I so did we have we talked about this yet? Is Pack hurt or why is why is yeah, Death no Triangle idea. not been a thing? I have no idea. Because the Luchas have been around, they've been on Dark and stuff. Some I'm just wondering if maybe Pack is hurt, um, or if he's just back overseas chilling for a little while. Yeah, I mean, it could just be the hey, creative has nothing for you, so just hang out. <laughs> yeah. Huh. Yeah, sorry, I don't know how the fuck I missed that one uh, right there on the list. That was one of my top three of the night. So, um, but yeah, now let's switch gears over to uh, WWE. I didn't make any notes for this week. I apologize. Um, I was a little uh, covered up today when, when I usually would have been making notes. Um, the big thing for me from the week of WWE was uh, the end of Raw for Monday night when... Uh, Jimmy shows back up when Sammy's in the ring and, uh, you know, had a match versus it was Sammy and Jimmy. And then Jay showed back up at the end and Jay goes in and looks Jimmy in the eye. Then he gets out and looks Sammy in the eye and hugs him. And then Sammy turns and tells Jimmy it's not too late. And then Jay kicks the shit out of Sammy. Yeah. And that, um, I yelled. <laughs> yep. I yelled and I told my wife that it broke my heart a little bit. Yeah. I mean, this is, uh, again, it was just masterful stuff. I'm still not sure that I wouldn't have had Jay not touch Sammy at all till, you know, the week before WrestleMania or, you know, done a thing where they didn't really – fight each other at all that much until the WrestleMania match. And somehow you were, they, you know, still ended it with like a handshake. Cause I still think Jay Uso has to be the one to super kick Roman and cause Roman to lose the title. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you just, you need to wrap that up in a nice little bow. Um, but yeah, I mean, if they're going to go this way, I mean, fuck the crowd ate it up. Right. I mean, they were heartbroken. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then Cody comes out. To try to help save Sammy. Yeah. Which just makes me think that that Cody versus Roman main event is going to end with just a lot of fucking interference from everybody. Right? Yeah. You got to imagine that like Solo and Jimmy come down and fucking Sammy Zayn and KO are going to come out and all these people are going to get involved. Um, and... I did like one little detail. I don't know if you caught this because I don't know how much you watched of Raw, but in the backstage segment that had Elias and um, uh, Rick Boogs. Yeah, I missed that. Yeah, when Boogs walked away, you could see Cody Rhodes talking to Kevin Owens in the background. Ah. Yeah, I love the little nuances and the little details like that that they're doing because we've talked about it. It brings you into that wrestling world. Um. And obviously, Cody was probably getting to KO that, hey, he needs to join up join up with Sammy and go after those tag team pals, trying to convince him to help in their fight against the bloodline. Um, I do like how there are a lot of different people, though, coming together to try to topple the bloodline. Uh, because, you know, Roman and, and Jimmy and Jay and now Solo here this year have really just uh, – they've left a lot of bodies in the wake, right? Uh, yeah. to, to their reign up to the top like this. So it makes sense that a bunch of guys need to band up together to try to take down the big bats. Uh, so that's kind of cool. Um, it's like a fucking Voltron of wrestlers. Yeah. yeah. It's like a damn like medieval uh, fucking fantasy story or something. Uh, we got <laughs> the, These band, band of dudes got to team up to go take down the dragon or something, you know? <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, Sami Zayn is 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 amazing. Jey Uso is amazing. Jimmy's amazing. You have all these super talented guys in you know a once in a lifetime pro wrestling story, and everybody's just nailing their part to perfection, and it, it's a joy to watch. Yeah, I hate that I, I didn't take the time to make notes because I feel like I don't really, I honestly do not remember anything else from the week in WWE because. 
I'm so honed in on the bloodline story. I, I, the rest of it is just like side shit to me. Like I, it, it's, it's mostly irrelevant. Like I've enjoyed some moments. I remember here and there some things, but like, I couldn't pull you a match from this last week that it that didn't involve the bloodline. Yeah. Well, the mat. Well, the other big thing from Raw Monday was uh, John Cena. I missed that. Yeah. Oh shit! You got to go back and watch that. Uh, John Cena in Boston just schooled Austin Theory on the microphone, and you could tell that like as much as the company wants Austin Theory to be like that next guy. Uh, he's not like John Cena is 20 years in this game and a legend for a reason. Uh, and he just absolutely took theory to school on the microphone telling him <laughs> that like, Hey, he doesn't have the heart. He doesn't have the brains to, to be a legend in this business. Like his, his the potential he has to be. Um, so, so what do they do with that match at Mania? Do they do they let Cena lose to put Austin over and make him seem like a big deal? Or do, yeah, you don't bring. I think the, Cena. Go ahead. I think that's what you do. You have Cena lose. I think you you go to you go to Austin, and you say, "Hey, this is this is your it's your moment. Like you're going to beat John Cena, but like we have a lot of stock invested in you, and we think highly of you." But now's the time for you to show it. Like you got an opportunity. And when you get across the ring from a legend like that guy, you know, don't let him beat you up too bad, which he 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 took him to task Monday night. Uh so now it's going to be interesting to see how many f- more face-to-face interactions they have leading up to WrestleMania. Uh cuz you know, John Cena kept hitting him with body shots and knockout blows, and Theory didn't really have an answer for it. I, go back and watch the promo, and, and you'll see, like, oh, shit. I mean, <laughs> it's um, – and basically, you know, it's what uh, a lot of – it's a, what a lot of people have, have said about Theory, which is, like, you're just, you're just generic. John Cena's big thing was, like, I don't believe you, and these people don't believe you. And so you need to find it in yourself if you're going to, you know, uh, to be a superstar – here in WWE. So uh, I think it'll be a great match. Uh, and we're not going to get too many more of these John Cena moments like this. The one thing that was super fucking ham fisted and I, I hated it with a passion because I could, when he stopped at the ramp, I said, shit, they're going to do it. John Cena gets out the ring with Austin Theory. He walks back up to the ramp. He says, Austin, you're not ready. You don't deserve WrestleMania, but here's a man who does deserve WrestleMania, the American Nightmare, Cody Rhodes. And I was like, oh, shit. And they just had (laughs) Cody come out, and John Cena and Cody hugged, and Cena raised his hand. (laughs) And, like, it's, you know, it's like what we talked about on this podcast. Cody Rhodes is being positioned to be the next John Cena, which is all well and good. I'm just not very interested in going back to that kind of storytelling. Yeah. So, uh, again, nothing against Cody, nothing against Cena. It was just – you could you could tell exactly what they were trying to do, and, and they did it. So, hmm. which goes back – did you watch SmackDown from last Friday? Yeah, I, I did. I, I, I didn't I didn't see most of Raw, but I did see SmackDown. Of course, like we talked about on this podcast, what's going to happen when Cody Rhodes gets face-to-face with Roman Reigns for the first time? And I don't know how you felt about the Reigns and Cody promo. Again, much not as bad as Cena and in, in theory, but I thought Roman took it to him. I did too. Um I saw a lot of discussions about it and how great. Th- I mean, I thought it was a good segment overall, but I thought Roman came out looking looking much better, a- as good as Cody usually is with his promos. Um, and maybe that's just the story they wanted to tell for that night. But yeah, Roman looked like the better the better entertainer. Well, Roman's line that got me the most, because we've discussed it here, was after Cody got done, Roman just started smiling. He was like, damn, you're good. And then he said, "You pro- it sounds like you spent a week <laughs> on that. <laughs> yeah, like, well, we talked about the thing that I can I, I can feel the performative aspect of Cody Rhodes come through the screen. 
in a way that you do not feel with Roman Reigns. Everything, when Roman speaks into that microphone, you feel like he is being 100% completely genuine. So I'm going to say this, and I'm not shitting on any of my theater friends when I say this, um, because I have a lot of friends that have done, or some still do theater. But it's like when you... You see like a movie or TV actor, you know, and then you get a theater actor and try to put them in a movie or TV. You know, sometimes yeah. it works. Yeah, it's like everything sometimes is like don't. turned up to 11 when it should be turned down to like a six. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because like the camera does it's a like lot of the work. Yeah, like Roman, Roman's got the subtleties down. Um uh, Cody, Cody, I, I still think Cody's a great performer and great with his promos, but it is a little too much sometimes. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's again like like what we talked about. It's just his, I think his instincts are just a little bit off, or maybe he's trying too much. I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Obviously, a lot of people love him, and he is, you know, he's. Again, he's deserving of a WrestleMania main event. He's deserving to be the guy in that company. Uh, I just, I, I don't know. He's just not for me, I guess. It's the most respectful way I can say it. <laughs> uh, particularly when you put him face-to-face against Roman Reigns. Well, get used to him. Uh, that's, uh... that's true. I also love that Roman just set the titles down and laid them in front of Cody. Because he was so, just like, it's such a badass thing to do. Yeah. Like, just lay him so, down. So, so what do you want to talk about? Yeah, what do you want to talk about? And, like, the fact that, like, you're just laying those titles down because you're not even remotely kind of intimidated that the other guy's going to take them from you. You know, Like, you can willfully give them up out of your possession, lay them in front of you in between the other two guys because you know you're that much more of a badass than that guy. Now, all that yeah. to be said, Roman Reigns is going to get beat at WrestleMania. But what if he's? what if he doesn't? What if WWE calls an audible and they say, "Hey, we're not fucking ready to let the bloodline and Roman Reigns go go away." I don't know, man. That would be that'd be one hell of a of a pivot if they decided to I do mean, that. They've made it pretty clear that he's going to have some time off, so unless some unless they've had a major change of heart. Yeah, because I yeah, because I think the play probably for SummerSlam is is a Roman versus Jey Uso. Another match, um, or or solo Sokoa versus Roman, something like that. It'll be an inner bloodline feud, probably at SummerSlam. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I would expect Cody Rhodes to to probably honestly end up standing victorious at the end of WrestleMania with Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn both in the ring. Yeah, I mean that that wouldn't be a shocker at this. And point. You have the three of those guys that are there. I. I still don't, you know, we got a little bit more Rhea Ripley stuff from SmackDown, and if the internet's correct, it, it still might be Rhea Ripley and Charlotte as the night one WrestleMania main event. I just do not see how you do not have the undisputed tag team match between the Usos and KO versus Sammy go on last night one. So so what do you think about the overall, the way the card's shaping up? Because I saw somebody, I forgot who it was now, I should have should have made note of it, was kind of shitting on the the way the lineup is 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 shaping up, um, and saying like this could be the worst WrestleMania or the worst booked WrestleMania in a while. What do you think? I don't I don't think so because I think that the two your your two stories you have at the top of the card are as hot as anything's been in WWE. Yeah, but I mean those two those two aside, I mean. Yeah, but every WrestleMania, particularly when we went to two nights, has been like this. I mean, what do you remember from last year's WrestleMania? The Brock and Roman. That and the, the fucking, uh, for me, it's the Knoxville match and the women's match. So you, the three that I remember from, I couldn't even tell you the rest of the card last year's WrestleMania. At least Wasn't it Logan, Logan Paul and Miz? Oh, yeah, there was that. Yeah. That was a good match, though. Yeah, and I mean. Um, but yeah, two nights is a lot, and it gets thin when you start stretching it out that long yeah and i mean we still don't know maybe there's a stone cold that comes back here in the next couple weeks yeah i mean obviously john cena being at wrestlemania that's a big get 
Yeah, and I mean, I at first I was kind of like, yeah, it's not going to be that great, but like I feel like Logan Paul and Seth Rollins will tear the house down. Yeah. Um, Bianca Belair and Asuka will be the shit. Whoever the hell Gunther's in the ring with. Gunther's yeah. going to tear it down. So, like, I mean, you could look at it and say, yes, yeah, I mean, you could say, oh, the booking is a little bit stale. But, like, I I don't feel that way. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't either. I mean, there's, I'm sure there'll be some, some sleepers in there. Uh, but for now, like, I don't really see it. No, I mean, there'll be some, there'll be stinkers. <laughs> Every WrestleMania has got, you know, the fucking, hey, uh, my number one favorite for stinker of all time match would be whatever the fuck Bobby Lashley and the Bray Wyatt Uncle Howdy <laughs> ragtag group of misfits is going to do. Yeah, I didn't even think about that. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's probably going to be dog shit, but. I c- could not fucking care. <laughs> I think, so, yes, like you said, Seth and Logan are going to try to tear it down. Uh, Cody and Roman will be good just for the 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 feel of it, right? It'll feel like a big mm-hmm. time title fight. Uh, KO and Sammy reuniting to take down the Usos. That'll be big. Um, Bianca and Asuka. That's going to be a fucking banger too. Yeah. Then you'll have, you might have Lita and Trish Stratus. Oh, and then too. fucking Ray and Dominic. Oh yeah. I'm, that's like my second or third match I'm looking forward to the most. <laughs> so yeah, I think it'll be, I think it'll be a good WrestleMania. Um, I, I saw, um, I sent a TikTok to Jamie a couple hours ago. It was um, Dominic and Rhea backstage, and it was to the the audio that they used was that Stewie from Family Guy going, Ma, Mama, oh, yeah. <laughs> Mommy. <laughs> That's great. That's funny. It was pretty good. I did want to bring this up on a podcast because it, it'd be a pretty interesting thought experience. And if you're, if the listeners out there have any thoughts, let us know on Twitter. But how much different do you think this WrestleMania season would be? If instead of AEW's ratings kind of being in the toilet and being down from they've been in years past, what if Dynamite was doing like a 1.4 or a 1.5 million every single Wednesday? How much different do you think the WWE would be right now? That's a good question. Uh, Would it be different at all? Or would they feel a type of way and feel some pressure and be like, shit, this competition – 1.5 1.5 million. That's damn near what Monday Night Raw is doing. Um, what does Monday Night Raw get? Like one point, I think 1.8, something like that. I don't know. Cause like, okay. I, when I jumped back into wrestling and I love going over this a bunch on the show, but if you never listen, I started watching wrestling again about what, four years ago. And then AEW started about three years ago. I think my math may be off on that. Yeah. But I had I had about a year of watching WWE pretty much exclusively with some NXT sprinkled in, and then AEW started, and then I was watching, you know, Raw and SmackDown, and AEW Dynamite. There was no Rampage at the time, and then uh, I just started gravitating toward the matches and the wrestlers and AEW more, and I was like, I also trying to watch three shows a week seemed you know it was a little daunting. Um, I was also working a pretty grueling schedule at the time, uh, day jobs and freelance jobs, et cetera, et cetera. So I just went exclusively to AEW. Then Rampage starts. So then there's two nights there, which granted Rampage is only an hour. And then I guess it was not too long after Mania last year I started watching again. And then a little bit, you know, kind of here and there in WWE. And then McMahon got removed or whatever happened there exactly and then i started devoting a lot more time to smackdown and i only recently kind of started watching it raw like maybe in the last couple basically just to get bloodline uh plot points on monday nights because three hours is a lot for a monday night but i just wonder if some people are like just more in tune with what's and, and are just not, they just don't have the time on Wednesdays and went back to watching more WWE because of the bloodline story. Well, he, just because there, there's there, there's not been a really captivating story in AEW. I wonder if there's some of that is maybe to blame or, or what, 
Yeah, just a, a lack of urgency, I think, on Dynamite's part. I, I just think it, if Dynamite was on a roll and those ratings were trending up and they were routinely around 1.4 and 1.5 million every Wednesday, I think this WrestleMania season would be very, very different. I think they would have thrown – I think they would have backed the Brinks, up, Brinks truck up to get fucking The Rock to be at WrestleMania. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think you would already have seen Stone Cold by now if he was going to be here. Like, I think, you know, you probably wouldn't have this Bobby Lashley, Bray Wyatt stuff. I think that they just don't feel intimidated by AEW in a way that maybe they felt, you know, two and a half years ago. And yeah. it's caused the, not that WWE's bad. Uh, I just think some of the decisions they made, I think you for sure would have seen Sami Zayn in the main event. I think they would have felt compelled to do that because it was they wanted to be something surprising. Uh, yeah. I don't know if he would have beat Roman at Elimination Chamber necessarily, but I, I think the decision making process leading into WrestleMania would be very different if the the competition over there on the Turner Network was a little bit more stout than what it is now. Yeah, I mean, you might be right there. Just something to think about. So, if, listeners, if you think, yeah, hey, let us know. I think it's a cool thought experiment to have now that we have two wrestling companies in North America again for the first time in damn near 20 years. Um, yeah. Holler at us on Twitter at Alabama Slam Pod. Um, you can holler at us on Instagram, but we probably won't be too interactive there. <laughs> <laughs> we might just hit like uh, if you comment there. Uh, yeah. I mean, Hmm. It's a good question. You know, uh, I, I believe Dynamite had like 850 last night. Um, you know, they're, they seem to be falling a little bit. I feel like they'll get people back. I mean, you know, if, if you want to believe everything backstage, he could be cancerous, but CM Punk would, would bring in numbers. I feel like, um, at least briefly, get those numbers back up. Uh, yeah. Uh, to say the least. Yeah, yes, he, he would definitely, you would have the, all of the, <laughs> the, there would be a lot of chatter online about what's happening. There'd be a lot of eyeballs tuning in. I think if that were to come yeah. back. Well, uh, I think that's about it for me. Unless you got something else you want to holler about this week. No, that's it. I mean, WWE's in full toe WrestleMania. Uh, AEW has banger pay-per-views and then kind of seems to struggle following it up week to week. And yeah, if there were just a way to fucking meld these two companies together where you had bloodline level storytelling happening, uh, you know, alongside action pack balls to the wall action that happens on dynamite. I mean, fuck, this would be a hell of a program to watch. I did buy honor club by the way to, to watch. Did you? Yeah. I mean, I talked about last week how fucking stupid I thought it was. You put Eddie Kingston in the Ring of Honor, but if that's the only way I get to watch Eddie Kingston, then shit. I guess you did it right, then Tony Khan. You fucking got ten dollars from me. Take my goddamn so money. Shit. Although I have been going back and watching the Ring of Honor events from the beginning since two thousand two. Uh, so a lot of Brian Danielson. <laughs> uh, <laughs> almost, and then when they get on streaming service, I guess like all the fucking good Brian Danielson matches, minus like probably six or seven of them are all going to live on that streaming network between ring of honor and fucking AEW. Yeah. It's a hell of a, hell of a, a library they have there. Yeah. Well, all right, man. If, uh, if that's it, we'll say bye to y'all. We've run a little long, so I won't go through everything I normally go through. Um, but y'all tune in, uh, next Friday and, uh, holler at us on Twitter at Alabama slam pod. And we'll talk to y'all next week. Later guys. 